Hi, my name is Jonathan Chu. I'm the National Content Director of High School Programs for the Princeton Review. And we're going to look at some problems that the College Board released that will show up on the redesigned SAT. This pro particular problem will be in the writing and language test, in which grammar and punctuation will be tested in sentences that are parts of passages, which is going to be different from how it is now, in which grammar problems are tested, most of them are tested, in standalone sentences. So for this particular sentence here, what we have is, when any one of these changes occur, it is likely. So now that we have the sentence, Princeton Review students are going to start to attack this problem by following a method specific methodology. If we didn't have methodologies, what we might end up doing is plugging in each of these answer choices into the blank and sounding out all of these scenarios and see which one sounds the best. From a time standpoint, this wouldn't be the most efficient because we're, we're saying the sentence four times. What we would rather do is try to identify what the error is and work from that. So in this particular case, what we have underlined is a verb, occur. This would then be a, because it doesn't have an S, is going to be a plural verb. And what we know about plural verb, well, actually any verb, we know that a subject has to go with that verb. And what is the subject of the sentence? We might think of it as changes. But changes is part of this prepositional phrase and so the actual subject of the sentence is one. And so we then ask ourselves, is one singular or plural? And one is certainly indeed a singular pronoun. So if this is a singular pronoun with a plural verb, they do not agree. And this would be a subject-verb agreement issue. And so therefore, because I know that this breaks a grammar rule in which singular subjects need to go with singular verbs, I can cross off answer choice A, as well as answer choice B. So now between C and D, the, differences between, uh, the difference between these answer choices are, is that they is a plural pronoun, and it is a singular pronoun. And so every pronoun must replace another noun or a pronoun, or an antecedent. And so therefore, what is that pronoun replacing? And the pronoun in this sentence is replacing not the changes, but any one of these changes, which is singular. And so therefore, because the antecedent is singular, I need a singular pronoun, and that's why I eliminate answer choice C, and I know that answer choice D is correct. So by identifying the grammatical errors in the sentence, by understanding parts of speech, we were able to methodically eliminate answer choices to get down to the right answer.